very much. Uh, um, well, hello to everyone. Uh, my name is Pam Shaw, and I'm here right now on the unceded territory of Sinemuk First Nation uh, in Nanaimo, British Columbia. Uh, so I'm not too far from the ocean on a beautiful day. And what did I see today? I've seen quails today. I've seen two kinds of squirrels. Um, I saw a deer eating my hanging baskets, which explains why they look so raggedy uh, for it. So it actually went up and it's just on its two back legs and gnawed away at some flowers. So I, I guess the deer were here. So that seems fair for it. But um, I'm delighted today to be here. Uh, the topic is community engagement. And we're going to talk about uh, things that work, things that didn't work maybe so much, um, just creative ideas. And then we'll open up some time at the end if you have any questions or if you'd like to share your own stories about community engagement and how to, how to really bring people in uh, to what's happening. And I'm here today with two wonderful colleagues, uh, two people I love working with uh, more than anybody in the whole world. So they're here on the screen right now. So first I'll introduce Tina McLean. Um, Tina, would you mind saying a few words about yourself? Hello, I'm Tina McLean. I'm coming to you today from the unceded traditional territory of the Lakota people. Um, I'm Comox First Nation. I live on the Comox Reserve. Um, I am. I have worked with Comox First Nation in administration for about nine years. Started as office manager, and then I was housing coordinator, guardian watchman coordinator, assistant administrator, and administrator for the last few years. I was there. Um, I worked for Strathcona Regional District for over a year as the First Nations coordinator, helping them with engagement, uh, building relationships and cultural awareness and safety training. Um, and I am currently working for Cayuga Chakwasset. First Nations, and um, I'm working on the business side as their executive assistant. Okay. Thank you, Tina. Over to Ashley. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Ashley Wright. I am uh, zooming in from the unceded traditional territory of Comox First Nation. I myself, like Tina, am Comox First Nation. I live, work, and breathe Comox. Um, I am the, currently I'm the treaty manager for Comox First Nation. I help them prepare for uh, self-government uh, and manage a number of uh, projects with them, including things that are associated with comprehensive community planning and land use planning. Prior to that, uh, I worked in economic development for Comox First Nation for almost five years under the CEO. Uh, and then prior to that, I worked in banking from teller to management. So uh, my career has gotten more exciting and exciting as I go. Um, and that's me in a nutshell. Wonderful. Thank you uh, to, to you. And I, I should mention I'm, um, I'm the director of the Master of Community Planning Program at Vancouver Island University Port. And so I've been a planner for oh, about 37 years. And the, um, the thing that I am most interested in is community engagement. So I think this is, um, I think we're going to have a pretty fun time over the next uh, just short of an hour. So uh, let's start. Let's talk. Um, and we'll do this as a kind of free for all panel discussion if that works for Ashley and Tina for it. So maybe I'll raise some questions and, and I, you know, say oh, at the outset, I probably can't help myself to jump in uh, too, because it's in my nature, I suppose, <laughs> to jump in. But um, let's let's start. Well, let's start with some some happy ideas uh, around community engagement. So what what's uh, what's the first thing that pops to your mind when you think about community engagement? Just a, a happy story about engaging with uh, your community or another community. I think that uh, for community engagement for me, like the best part of it is really just getting in there, jumping in, connecting with the community. I learn as much or if not more from the community members than I go in to educate them on comprehensive community planning, land use planning, um, self-government. 
And I think that having some, not being afraid to have some really candid conversations and getting to know the members and understanding any root causes of any grievances that they may have with the nation or any amazing ideas that they have, uh, that has been my absolute favorite part of engagement. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, I agree with what you said, Ashley, and I, I enjoy getting to know the community and you go out there wanting their feedback on a certain topic and you just, you hear so many different opinions and views and, and, and their vision and I like hearing like there's more than one way to do something. So I like hearing all the various ways and and how um, something can be. Um, and so and then getting and then coming together as a group because fortunately, well, pre-COVID, a lot of engagement and it it's um you don't get together enough. So being able to get together um uh, for a discuss, share a meal or an event, have a discussion is um, very fulfilling. Yeah, yeah I agree wholeheartedly with with both of you on it. And I, you know, I think another cool thing that comes out of getting together is is you know learning together uh, for sure, but also things that are unrelated. And you know, the one that yeah. pops to mind, I was at a community once, and it was on a break in a community meeting and we were just sitting at a, a table, you know, just kind of shooting the breeze and chatting about things. And one of the um, older fellows just, we were, we were talking about the beach and he said, you know, the beach is a lot noisier uh, than it used to be. And, and everyone kind of, what do you mean? And he said, when he was a kid, the beach was just sand. Um, you're running out into the ocean and then over time it's turned into cobbles. So it's little rocks, um, the smallest rocks. And so now when the water comes in, the rocks, roll on each other, make a sound, roll back out and make a sound. And that, um, you know, set me off on a whole quest to find information. And we ended up, uh, you know, finding, um, you know, finding some, some cool mapping that had been done in the like 1850 or something for it. And then brought that back at, at another meeting. And it was just, it was just like the, there's, there's some of what you're there for, for the community engagement. Then there's all the other beautiful stuff that happens um, because exactly like you're saying, cause you're together because you're together in the same space or it's just uh, so much yeah, can like, happen. Like you're saying, like they, you can learn that so much history about so many oh, yeah, things, yeah, yeah, yeah. traditions, stories, um, and the laughter um, is great too. I am, yeah. Um, yeah, just getting That's to know awesome. people. Yeah, nice. That's beautiful. That's very nice. Um, I, think, I guess maybe let's stay on the positive side for a while. Do you have any any creative ideas for community in, engagement, getting people involved? And so something you tried and it really worked. I think it's important to be open minded because I think what work, works for one community might not work for another. And even from like engagement to engagement, what works for one engagement might not work for another. But I generally find that if you have the like smaller focus groups, like the world cafe styles where people can go from table to table or even in the world that we are in now with Zoom having the breakout sessions. And I find members, especially elders, I find are more willing to share their ideas uh, through a smaller group versus a larger group. Well, I, not everyone's comfortable, right? In a big group. Yeah. 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 I think they like um, knowing your target, knowing like something skew it for the age group, screw it, skew it. <laughs> because like um, bingo is huge. So, mm -hmm. and so going for walks, oh, people like going back to the lands and going for on trails and land tours and then going to, or just like bowling. Um, we were doing meetings and we were doing like family meals. So the family, mem invite the family members that you like 
<laughs> and, then, and then either have it at their house or at a restaurant or wherever, and then have these discussions during the meal. Um, tagging on to other events as well. That's smart, where, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that, it, yeah, and then knowing, because not everyone's on social media and everything too, right? So you also got to be ready to be creative, um, depending on the time of year as well, like going for trail walks and stuff. But the young ones, cap capturing them like with the old TikTok down. Or yeah, but that's definitely something that uh, I've had to learn over the past two and a half years through the pandemic is that youth really like to be engaged through Instagram, TikTok not on Facebook and to actually utilize like the capacity of the youth to do the Instagram posts and the TikTok because we were informed. I'm, I consider myself young, at, you know, 36 years young and they, the youth know when we're posting versus a youth posting. And there's been feedback where you get a used to do it. Okay, we both did the same thing, Ashley. We consider ourselves young, but we're going the yeah. TikTok. The TikTok, yeah. Let's go the, the TikTok. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Uh, I get. I have never made one, but uh, I sure go down that rabbit hole a couple of times a, a day. Yeah, I'm just gonna watch a video, and then it's like what half hour later. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a video of a cat okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's so true uh, it's so true it's i and i i've never actually been on tiktok so i can't even comment on, on i i know what it is i'm aware what it is, but i couldn't even begin but uh i know I'll, I'll share one thing it, it was this week uh and it was at vancouver island university for it but it was the board of governors meeting so this is all you know, it's the president, it's the vice president, it's um, business leaders and people sitting around. There's a couple of students there, but generally the, the average age in the room is, is pretty old, uh, really. And so it, it was their, um, they were talking about risk management. So someone did a presentation on how to manage risk, like the pandemic or earthquakes or, you know, everything that can go wrong um, at a university. And then um, we, me and five students did the part after on kind of a world cafe format of breaking the room up into five different groups and every table had a different topic and then people moved around the tables. But I just said, you know, I just felt like, you know, it's been a long time since we all got together and um, would it, you know, just everything's so linear, everything's so just go on Zoom, read this, write this. So, you know, would anyone, so to the board, would you like to do something fun? And then that was kind of my trap because no one would say, no, I don't <laughs> no, want to do I don't want to have fun. Yeah. <laughs> so like, yeah, let's do something fun. And so there was bags on each table that were paper bags that were stapled shut and they opened them and there was four colors of Play-Doh um, in them. And so we played Play-Doh Pictionary for 10 minutes. So um, just for fun. And so we started, and here's my, my words I had printed out uh, for it. So um, one person from each table would come and see the word. So we had Salish Sea, I'll find some of the good ones uh, for you. Uh, marmot, that's a hard one. We start off with cat, because cat's really easy, so someone gets it fast. And then they just keep getting harder and harder and harder uh, for the words. And then we did, um, another one. yeah, there's cat, electric car, uh, Vancouver Island University. And then I put a big sign on it saying, note, cannot do letters, because people would just go VIU, right? So they would have cheated. And then the very last one we had was, cybersecurity, because that's one of the big threats um, that um, hackers will take over all the computer systems, which is, has happened at other places. And then the university has to pay a ransom to get out of it. And it's like, it's a big deal, right? And so I, I was a little worried, would it work? Because because it's, uh, you know, not necessarily a fun, we'll keep it in the Zoom, I guess, and on the recording that will live forever, but you know, not necessarily a super fun uh, crowd. Everyone loved it. So I've heard about it all week long, about everyone had such a good time. And, and uh, the team that won cybersecurity, the person had made a little computer out of Play-Doh and they were typing on the little computer for it. And then someone guessed it. And, and so people had a super fun time. So um, yeah, I guess sometimes when you're not sure, 
you know, something work and then it does. And that's, that's pretty fun for engagement. So just one, one thing. And then the other one I wanted to mention was uh, um, Alana Mitchell, uh, also from Comox First Nation. And back, we were working on the CCP years ago and we had a speed dating event. I don't know if uh, Ashley and Tina remember that one and, and set up in the gym. So there's tables all around the perimeter of the gym and there's different topics at different tables. And then people would start at one table and, and someone would explain the topic, talk about it. And then uh, we had a drum. So somebody would hit the drum and then you had to move to the next one. And it, it moved really quickly. Um, and, and then there was food and music and it was fun. It was just a fun time. Um, and I just remember the, the announcement about it had a, which we'll just say, I guess we're all friends here, but had a, a kiss, yes. like a lipstick kiss. Yeah. For it, and we and we kind of said, "Oh, is this appropriate? Is this is this fair?" And we just get out. Ah, let's go for it. And I guess if we get in trouble, then we do. And it, um, everybody liked it. It was good. It's a fun time. <laughs> fun. Okay. Okay. Well, maybe we'll just we'll just venture into the 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 dark side of community engagement a little bit. So, have you ever? Do you have any recommendations on what not to do? And maybe an example of, oh, uh, that was that was a bad idea. <laughs> I think sometimes when we go into an engagement with such a rigid plan and one of the examples was um, it wasn't necessarily Pam or I but it was other colleagues uh, we were teaming up with them and Tina will remember this too and we'd gone into uh, a land use planning engagement with membership and we wanted them to vote and like make decisions through voting and it uh, it, it almost felt like uh, I guess like a paternalistic approach to the engagement by coming in with these preconceived uh, assumptions and asking members to um, vote you know, do you want carriage houses, yes or no, or, um, and it ended up going a little sideways. Um, but I think that, you know, it's stepping back and like looking at it, I think that going into each of the sessions with more open mind and open heart, uh, and knowing that maybe something that you've planned for the session might not work and that's okay and having backup plans on you know <laughs> yeah. yeah i think it was what you were saying i'm completely true and it's like uh having a communication plan like um oh we're gonna do these new things um these new clickers but you're not voting on it we're just getting your opinion and it's just quicker that way um and then sort of like um, blanketing that information out there continuously until the meeting. We're going to introduce this um, new clicker dynamic. Um, uh, if you go there and go, oh, we're going to do this, they're going to be like, you're voting and we know you're, you know, you, you got certain people who do stuff like that. So um, yeah, things can go sideways. And then, um, we, Comox First Nation had land code ratified. And then what we didn't know after ratification is that you have no laws. Um, you become lawless because it all falls away from the Indian Act. So we had to do, and in the land code itself, it, it dictates how um, you're going to make these laws and what it looks like, what the process is. And so the people vote, rat we had a really high number for people wanting land code. Um, but when we went to do laws following the process, they were like, what are you doing? Um, we're not doing this like this. And then we're like, well, in the land code that you voted for, this is what it says. So this is what we're doing. And they're like, no. And we're, and I think it took three or four kicks at the can before we were able to find a way. 
because we, we kept going back and tried this way and that way and another way. And the community's like, yeah, no, go back. No, no. And then we finally found a way of, okay, this is blank. <laughs> tell me what you want. You tell me and I'm just listening. So you can, timelines, no, well, those were altered. Budgets, yeah, those were altered. Um, the process was altered. <laughs> like you, because the community decided that they wanted, or the membership decided that they wanted to do it a different way, which is fine. But um, I think it's being able, <laughs> so don't go in there with a, a notion of this is what we're doing because they're going to say, don't tell me what we're doing. I'm going to tell you what we're doing mm -hmm. and listening. Um, so that was a big learning curve as well, because I think we ended up passing a couple of laws. Once we got the, the process down, it was like, oh, okay. And then it was fine, but it was it took a few kicks at the can to be able to get it there. Um, so that was rather challenging. Yeah. Yeah, you both you both raise a really good point around flexibility and, and you know having that backup plan if if something goes sideways. And uh I know like it was a one thing and um I was a participant at it and the the, the person came in and they were just, oh okay, well, you know, we sent the readings out ahead of time. So let's talk about them. You know, the stuff you're supposed to read, and everyone's like, I didn't read it. Uh, <laughs> I don't, you know, I, I, I went in, I hadn't read the background because I thought there was going to be a presentation at the beginning. And, and yeah, I, I was aware the person had sent things out, but you know, every day is full of other things. And, and so I, I was really, um, and the, the facilitator was kind of angry with us because we weren't ready, you know, to have this deep discussion and you're just kind of well you know no no one read it <laughs> no one was ready for this we really needed um, some kind of uh, introduction to it too and it was a good takeaway for me I thought you know it's not um, it's not reasonable to expect people to put in hours and hours of pre-work on something uh, you know when you know, the better way is here's you know, let's talk about this and then create the space for how much time do we need to, you know, is this a fast decision or is this something we're going to talk about for a long time? And I think, uh, um, yeah, I guess having space for both, whichever way it has to go is, is good. Yeah. yeah. And I think for like, you've hit the nail on the head there, Pam, like, I think it's really important to, uh, set the expectations of what will, will be at the meeting prior to the meeting and if it's a big topic that's being covered or even a topic that has some uncomfortable conversation it's so important to do some of that pre-work to build the trust and transparency with the members with the community um, and don't just start at you know the big conversation do an introduction, do some icebreakers, like you alluded to earlier, Pam, like really, really build that trust and transparency with the nation. Yeah, and don't think you're gonna go into that meeting and get all your answers that you're looking for either, because you're gonna be like, hey, we're going to have this meeting and when we come out with the community, membership's gonna tell us all these things. And we're gonna go do all this great work. Yeah. You're going to go there and they're going to have a lot of questions and they're going to say there's not enough people here. You can't take this tiny group that we have and have that be our voice. You're going to have to do other work, you have to have another meeting, even though um, you've already put it in three newsletters. It's on Facebook twice a week. <laughs> it's yeah. like you done it but they're going to be like nope you're going to have to come back and because that's you're not going to get what you want out of this meeting so the, so then you got to be ready to um have a buffer in your timeline too uh, being able to adapt it's all about adapting because yeah. it's yeah things can change on a dime yeah yeah and you raise a really good point about and you see more in local government um, and and you'll see the you know the planner writes the report and say oh the the public said this you kind of well it wasn't actually the public it was the six people that came to the meeting it wasn't 
the public, right? And same in, in community, right? If um, does this, if you, you know, you're saying, oh, the community said this and kind of really, was it the whole community or was it, you know, the people who came to the meeting, right? And is that, is that, is it, is it the same? You know, is it the right, is, is it fair to say that um, or not? And if it's, if it's not, then you have to keep going. Like you're saying, Tina, try something else and. Um, because they'll different. question it. They'll say, oh, so you're going to say, we're going to pass this or move forward with this, whatever initiative. Yeah. Um, based on the 10 of us here for dinner tonight. And the, yeah, that's not going to work. Yeah. Yeah. I know the other point of I'll just I'll use the word failure. I think in community engagement, and we've we've talked about it before, is is asking people. I'm going to call it the size of pipe question. And so, if I said to everyone right now, oh, we're we're building a sewer system, should we use six inch pipe or twelve inch pipe? And if you had to say right now, and and you know the answer, I'm I'm not an engineer. I'd say I don't I don't know. I don't know what the right kind of like. Don't ask me yeah. what what kind of pipe it is. And so. And, you know, I think just being really careful not to ask questions that people would say, well, you know, how could I know the answer? I'll have an opinion because I have an opinion on everything, you know, <laughs> just whether I know anything about it or not, I'll, I'll, I'll put together an opinion uh, for sure. But just uh, it's really frustrating, I think, for people to get asked questions that they're kind of, how, how could I know the right answer? Mm -hmm. Yeah, making yeah. sure they're informed. Yeah. They're making and they know they have an educated, informed decision. Yeah. Opinion. Yeah. Yeah. On the flip side of that, though, you don't want to get too technical either in some of the meetings uh, in, you know, in the case of Comox and negotiating self-government, you know, there's there can be a number of topics on fisheries and forestry and groundwater and you really don't want to get into some of the really technical dry information. Some people might love it. And, you know, we got to be prepared for um, having the information for those. But if we're presenting at a community level and uh, talking about the mountain block recharge that runs down the mountain into this aquifer and that aquifer, um, yeah, I would just caution not to get too heavy on the technical side either. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what you just said. <laughs> don't, go, don't go too, too much into the being like the whatever going down the mountain into the oh, yeah, that's groundwater. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and this, I mean, this isn't really on topic or anything, but I, maybe when we get to questions, we can talk about it too. But um, it I, just made me think about, you know, someone presenting this very technical information and, you know, I was at a meeting uh, one time, a, like a big Saturday meeting, and someone was presenting on very, very uh, detailed information on archaeology. And, um, but I can't, and it was a lot of information. And I don't remember a single thing the person said. All I can remember is they were wearing a green t-shirt um, and that was kind of wrinkled and they had a hole in the tummy. Um, and so the person's the little piece of the person's tummy was showing um, while they were presenting. And it's, it's funny how I'll, I'll remember, I don't remember a word, they said, but I'll remember that for the rest of my life. That, <laughs> that it was a, it was a, a consultant that was there and um, yeah, we saw his tummy. So <laughs> sounds like, it, not sounds, but it, those technical meetings. Yeah. That's like BC hydro meetings. I have no idea what's being said. We have to hire someone. Because they've come to a meeting, all this great big presentations, these big people, and then we don't, and then they expect us to say yes or no, and we have no idea what they just said. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so we had to find another process. Like, okay, you're going to have to give us some money to be able to hire people who can interpret this for us yeah. and advise us um, um, on the for Comox because because yeah yeah it was, it was one of those meetings they come in say all this jargon and, and the meeting didn't work you. yeah and it's just it's just frustrating for people for everybody right yeah it um, is yeah we touched on it a little bit but I'm wondering about social media and community engagement maybe talking about that a little bit more I know um 
Um, I think with Comox First Nation, I know there was live streaming uh, when meetings were happening so that people could watch uh, from home um, is one. I you remember a few years ago, there was a, a, a pretty good video <laughs> that was made on the comprehensive community plan. Yeah. That was a, a lot of fun and, and lots of people got involved in it uh, for it. So any other thoughts you have around social media? And Yeah, I think with the pandemic, we've really had to shift. Um, like I know we were fairly progressive prior to the pandemic with doing videos and um, live streaming on Facebook for members who are living away or who may not have been able to attend. Um, but with the pandemic, we've uh, started looking at, you know, other social media platforms like the like TikTok and Instagram and um, continuing on with Facebook because that does reach a lot of our elders. Um, looking at doing blended meetings now that the restrictions are uh, loosening a bit. And so people like Zoom, we've had members engaged who have either A, never been engaged before, um, that are living, you know, in Toronto or Kelowna, and we also have members on reserve who are participating who've never participated before because of Zoom. Um, so that's really interesting. And then we've got the people who want in person. So we'll go to a, a sort of a more blended approach. It gets very technical uh, for the, you know, the software that's needed and all the little tools and microphones and all that. But uh, we've also started podcasts. And that's something that uh, has really uh, generated a lot of interest. Um, people could just throw on their podcast while they're cooking their dinner or uh, while they're getting ready in the morning. And it's a good way to share information. Um, I, I've really enjoyed the, the podcasts. Yeah. yeah, lots of people listen to them too, which is, yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. I think that uh, with those meetings that we had, um, it was pre-COVID. And for the people who were out of town or didn't want to come to the meeting for whatever the reason is, um, or couldn't attend the meeting for whatever the reason is. Um, and then we had the blended that you were talking about. So it was live, but it was also recorded. So people could even ask questions live. Um, and then people can go watch the videos after. So it's like on, um, yeah, so uh, that's just another piece that's there. So for people to, if they miss the meeting, they can actually go watch the recording. Because there's also, you can give updates and stuff like that. And then I've heard remarks of it's um, a matter of interpretation. We didn't really say that, or they skew it however they want to skew it. So if they watch the recordings, sorry. That's okay. If they watch the recordings, they can see for themselves. It's what the information themselves. Mm. I will also add, uh, we worked with um, not so much tribal council. So they're a tribal council on the island here to create an app for our members. Oh, cool. so members can sign up and use the app. Um, and hopefully in the future, we can incorporate voting capabilities into the app. So it could be voting for elections or voting on the treaty. Um, that's still something we're working on, but uh, hopeful for that to happen. What can you do on the app right now? Uh, we can upload our podcasts, our videos, links to uh, brochures, summaries, um, a multitude of things can be put onto the app. There's even uh, alerts where um, a member could post, you know, there's a bear on our reserve on such and such street. Yeah. 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 It's, I was just saying, yeah, you could do emergency alerts, right? If something was happening, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's really cool. Um, yeah. That's really, you I mean, you do photos, uh, all kinds of cool yeah, things. Yeah. You do um culture you can do tours you could do language like yeah. you can do singing and dancing um yeah 
Yeah. It's just always be mindful to have the elders in your forefront in your planning on mm -hmm. um, to make sure that you get their point of view on make sure you're catching them, making sure you're catching their their opinions, their comments, their stories, their answers, um, regardless of what you do. Yeah. Whether it's at an elders luncheon or whatever. Yeah. Um, at a bingo or something go have yeah and, and you raised the point before tina about going to where people are and like the, the elders luncheon is a, a great thing you know maybe people are not interested in coming to a comprehensive community plan meeting but if if you go to the elders luncheon to um understand there are thoughts on the comprehensive community plan then you you know um you hopefully you get lunch out of it too right if you're there well, at the right sometimes. time yeah <laughs> Work, work for lunch. Yeah, yeah. Not, nothing wrong. I was just thinking on the app, that's such a neat idea too, um, even for um, things to celebrate. Um, you know, so who's, like, graduation's coming up and, uh, you know, people's birthdays and things, you know, wouldn't that be fun too on the app is to say, hey, whose birthday is it today? So. Aw. Yeah. Aw. Uh, everyone give a birthday tribute. Yeah. To someone. That'd be fun. That would be fun. Yeah. yeah um, okay. I'm just I'm conscious of the time too. Uh, um, well, I have a list of questions. Any any projects you'd like to highlight, or just lessons learned, or just you know, as grizzled veterans of the communication wars uh, that you've been on and community engagement wars. Just anything you go, man. I I wish I would have known this. Right? This was a good lesson. I've got. Uh, two, but they're they're positive ones. Oh, good. Yeah. Um, the first one is uh, we were doing an update to our comprehensive community plan, and along with the comprehensive community plan, there is an action plan. So taking out all the priorities that the members have highlighted in that CCP, and getting it into chief and council strategic plan. And as we were doing the update, I was going through the action plan. And like just technically going through the action plan and checking off like, wow, this has been done. This has been done. That's been done. And I said to Pam, I think we need to celebrate these wins at an event with the community. Yeah. Um, so at one of our engagement sessions, we had the action plan on the wall and highlighted just how many of those actions like have been completed. And that is thanks to so many people's hard work, whether they're in the administration or members' voices saying this needs to happen. And so it makes it into that action plan and the carry through that action plan. It was just so important to celebrate those wins and look how much that the nation has progressed in a matter of five years. Wow. Um, and it was really, it was one of those really good, feel good meetings with the community that you're celebrating these wins. And that always comes back to mind. Like it's so, so important to celebrate those wins with the members. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, um, having someone to be able to champion it having someone to be able to dedicate the time to it um, because everyone's so busy. Everyone, you know, is wearing multiple hats. So um, it can easily fall through the cracks even though everyone thinks it's important. So it'd be great to have someone be able to take that and champion it on, um, to take the lead and be able to like, have you done this? Have you, you know, be able to ensure that the process is being followed in in your timelines as much as you can. Um, and then uh, my thoughts are um, being sure to notify the membership of any projects or engagement that's coming up. Um, continue once you have the date, just continuously have this information going out there. Um, always like have an engagement community plan um, started. Uh, it may change a bit, um, but if you had something laid out before you start a project, 
um, then uh, I let the community know of you, any updates, the, um, any follow-ups. Um, then there's always going to be people who are negative, regardless. We didn't hear it. We didn't know. We didn't, regardless of what you do. Mm -hmm. So just so you don't take it personally. Um, it don't wear that because it's not you. Um, but there will always be people like that. Um, and also being able to have an open door to be, well, not always have an open door, but being able to be contacted, whether come in or by phone or email or whenever to answer questions so that um, people aren't being given the wrong information. People aren't spreading wrong information. Um, people can uh, know that they're being heard, um, that they are being listened to. I think a lot of ang the, uh, my experience is um, some people who have trust issues or um, are very unsatisfied. They don't think they're heard. No one's listening to them. Mm -hmm. um, so just being able to take the time to sit in and listen, genuinely listen to them. Um, and and that's really what people want to know that they are being heard. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Well, and, and you just, you remind me of something. I know one good thing that um, Comox has done at meetings is when people ask a question and nobody has the answer right away is always uh, follow up on it. So um, it gets put over on the wall or something. So people know their, their question got recognized for it. And then someone follows up on it and gets, yeah. ends up in the next newsletter or something. And it just, it really, the, to what you're saying, just really shows respect for, you know, we care about what your question is. And, and if you're asking a question, probably everybody wants to know too what it is. So it just, it was a really, so it's always been a, a really nice technique. Um, so I think you know. it also would be mindful that by the time we go to the community and we're presenting a project or an idea, we've been working on this internally for quite a bit. Um, yeah. And this is the first time that the membership's hearing about it. So yeah. we're already just about completed it and moving on, already starting some other projects. And this is the first time they're hearing about it. So we've really got to be mindful to take the time and ensure that they get caught. They're not where we are, like had the same amount of hours put into it as we had. So to, to be able to take the time to explain it to them. Yeah, that's a really, you know, you're right. You've been working on it for years, right? You know all the backstory and all the um, background to it. Yeah. Oh, I was just thinking of a, a, um, a lesson learned for me is, is to always have a backup plan. Uh, and I, I'm just thinking of two examples. One was a few years ago, I was in quite a remote community uh, further up the coast and had my, we were looking at maps, mostly it was about lands uh, for it. So I had my PowerPoint all happy with it. And, you know, that's the idea. We're going to be looking at these big maps. And um, just before, kind of the day before I left, I thought, yeah, I should print a few just in, just in case. I should print some maps just so we have um, some extras and got up there and uh, the person presented ahead of me on PowerPoint and everything was great. And it was, it was quite a windy day and I'm walking up to start my presentation and the power goes out. Um, so there is no PowerPoint. <laughs> so you're just going to, oh no. But we, we had maps and we could work our way through it because, uh, you know, it was a bit of a last minute idea to throw the maps um, in my bag, but I'm really glad we had them because otherwise I had nothing. You know, I, I, had, I <laughs> yeah. How do you explain <laughs> nine thousand hectares? You know, of let's start at the top, and you know, just you couldn't. Even, <laughs> yeah. and, and then the other one was, and this is from a long. This is 1989 in downtown Edmonton at the. For people who are from Edmonton, it's that. Uh, uh, it was a new building at the time, and I, I'll, I'll think of it at three o'clock in the morning what the name of the building was, and I'll just phone everyone and tell you at three o'clock. Uh, but it was like brand new building, and think back to the 80s, so super plush carpet, you can picture that for it. And uh, it was KPMG was the consulting group, 
uh, we were working with us, I worked for Alberta Municipal Affairs, and it was the very first of the clickers uh, that came out. So very like first generation clickers. So they had set up this really complicated uh, meeting and we were voting on stuff. And, and the one fellow in his, you know, 1980s suit, you can picture, you know, everyone's little, hair's a little bigger and you know, a little too much lipstick on, right? That whole thing uh, for it. But he comes walking over to the, his computer um, to start the thing going, touches it, and he's picked up static electricity on the way. And so he sparks his computer and the whole thing shuts down. It's, it's ruined. It's, it's, it's like the computer has fried uh, is what's happened. So we had nothing. And we, and we stood around, <laughs> we're going to look at each other, we're going to, uh, what do we do, what do we do? And so we ended up voting just by hand is what happened at the meeting. And so it, um, you know, it turned out okay, but the technology was what the whole meeting was about. And everyone was excited about this brand new technology. And so it, um, yeah, it didn't really, it, it, it a little mostly didn't work out a little bit worked out so uh that's, and i blame that <laughs> on a little mostly, bit. yeah yeah i blame that on the, the plush carpet of the 1980s so, <laughs> true so that's where we were on that one okay well I'm, I'm just conscious of the time too and knowing we have about an hour so let's open the floor if anyone has any questions or things you'd like to discuss um lessons you've learned or things you you have observed Yeah, we could just keep it open if you if someone or feel free to type in the chat um, if you would like to as well, and I can read the question out uh, for everyone. Okay, I'll have one thing. I guess one thing I was going to mention is is there's um, so much for resources. So if you Google community engagement, you are going to come across. Uh, a thousand different ideas, or if you Google icebreakers uh, for different ways to start meetings. And, and uh, you know, it's not always appropriate to have an icebreaker. Um, you know, if it's, if it's a very serious meeting and you, you were coming into something really serious and important, you said, oh, let's play Plato Pictionary. You know, people would, what are you doing? <laughs> this, this feels super inappropriate. And so um, putting some thought to it, uh, you know, I think back to uh, um, got, like this is this is be the '90s, I think. But I know I was at one meeting, and their icebreaker was, "Oh, everyone, turn, um, you know, to the person next to you and just massage their shoulders a little bit to help them, you know, help everyone relax for the meeting." And you know, could you imagine today if you did that at a meeting? If if you said, "Hey," so, <laughs> you know, no one no one would do that anymore. So so things change over time uh, too for what's appropriate or not appropriate, but. Um, you know, sometimes doing something at the beginning of the meeting, like, like, like you're saying, you know, bingo or um, other, you know, fun get to know each other is, uh, um, is a good way. And Ashley, you had a thought on that? Yeah, I, I just want to mention, and I sh probably should have mentioned it earlier when we were talking about it, but in Comox, like, it's really, really, really important for us to start all of our meetings with culture. And that really, really sets the tone. Uh, for the session and creates that safe space. And uh, so I just wanted to, to mention that, but I do see we have uh, some comments in the chat. Yeah. What was different, what was that, The not a code of conduct for a meeting, rules of engagement? Rules of engagement, yeah. That, that, that was left, that was reviewed every, um, because there is a, you can make that as a group Mm -hmm. at the first meeting and then have that because it's made by the people participating and then you can develop it and have it review at the beginning of every meeting and have it up there like we, we challenge ideas not people you know stuff like that um yeah yeah yeah, um, Ken has raised a really good point in the chat about doing a round table and, and going to each person and, and seeing if, if someone has a comment and um, because lots of people are not comfortable speaking up, uh, you know, to uh, if it's just if there's a lot of people in the room and if you have to like, you know, stand up and say something, a lot of people are kind of, well, I'm, I'm just, I'm not saying anything. So you end up with, uh, you know, often two or three people can monopolize a meeting um, in that way. And it's, um, yeah, it's a lovely idea to do a round table and give everyone a chance. And if someone wants to pass, they can pass too, that you don't have to say anything. 
Right. Yeah, and, and sometimes another... having the, it's smaller groups too. Yeah. yeah. It is having, because the people who don't want to be talk in front of everybody or feel like someone or some whatever, uh, but do just feel in, if they break out into smaller groups, it, people don't, will feel less insecure or shy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I agree. And Ken, another good point from Ken about having a meeting that ends on time and or having a meeting end time that is kept. That's exactly true. Mm -hmm. uh, I know often at the start of meetings, uh, and I, you know, I'd be interested in people's thoughts on it. Uh, you know, some people will say, okay, well, let's take some time and just wait uh, for everyone to get here or everyone to, um, you know, sign in or something. And then other people would say, well, no, you know, you said it was starting at two, start at two o'clock. I, you know, I showed up here on time. So don't waste my time. So it's a, I guess it's one of those ones you try to have some, try to have some feeling on, on what's the best approach. And then, yeah, I agree with you because people, um, especially in, in Zoom world, when everyone has Zoom stacked up back to back, and then you're in one and it drifts over past three o'clock. And then the next person is texting you and saying, Ashley, where are you? Ashley, <laughs> I'm still in the Zoom. Yeah, that was still going yesterday. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because it, uh, but you're right. It, it's um, as the facilitator, if you're the person in charge, you you know show show respect for everyone who's there. So, yeah, yeah, that's a really good point. I think having uh, good people who are emceeing or facilitating the meetings as well to keep things on track. Mm. Yeah, people are counting on you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Building some extra time in the agenda as well. Um, I always like to under promise and over deliver. Um, and if we build extra time into the agenda, uh, that can also um, help alleviate some of those. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And not, not being in, um, in other words, not being afraid to have a break. Uh, you need some things and it's, even if it's intent, well, maybe sometimes if it's so intense, you just need that chance to, to especially I think, I don't for everyone last, two years virtually of sitting in the same spot. <laughs> it's just, it's nice to be able to get up and move around and um, have some space, yeah, in in that meeting. And I guess one, it, the other one it reminds me of on the get together meetings is, uh, um, I don't you know, raise it as a question, but, uh, you know, having respect for people that are coming out and, and you know, at least have have some, something to eat, like some cookies or something, or, you know, or coffee available, uh, you know, you're going to a three hour meeting and there's nothing available, never doesn't, doesn't feel respectful. You know, it feels like, like, you, know, you want to take care of people that, that bother to show up um, as well. Um, yeah. And also be mindful of, of how long your meeting is, if it's an all day thing or something, being interactive, switch it up. Just yeah. sitting there listening for a long period of time is can be a little much um being able to have some little interactive um is just makes it um go by yeah uh, a lot more engaging yeah yeah and using you know, different media too so not everything's a giant powerpoint um you know sometimes it's powerpoint sometimes it's a discussion sometimes it's a move around look at these things that are happening uh, add your comments onto this. Uh, I think are, are all, all good ideas to shake it up. And I guess, and I'll say one one book I really re I relied on for years. I'll just show everybody the it's Sam Kaner, K A N E R, and it's it's just a book that's chock full of ideas on community engagement. Uh, it's about it's a facilitator's guide to participatory decision making. So it's called, but it's it's what it's really about is community engagement. And there's but truly a there's a thousand great ideas uh, that you can find um, on the internet. So, any other questions? Any comments? I had a question. <laughs> okay, over to Helen. Hi, folks. This has been amazing. I've been fur furiously writing down notes and um, I, a little gap I had was at one point, uh, Ashley, I think you were talking about an app that you were building on and was doing voting and uh, I missed the name of the app. So just wondering if you could just uh, go back to um, what that platform was and, and any, any uh, 
Yeah, yeah. The, so the, the app is being developed through, uh, so on the island, we've got not so much tribal council, um, but the developer uh, is, their company is called Hawk Solutions. Um, and they work for a number of uh, Indigenous governments. They also work for provincial governments. Um, and they've done work down in the States as well for like big medical firms down there. Um, so highly, highly recommend uh, taking a look into Hawk Solutions. They're, they're great. Thank you. That's, that's great. And, and I'll, 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 sh I'll share two back that, um, and it's a shout out to Candu, um, that Candu and FCM developed the uh, Stronger Together Toolkit that's ah. online at uh, Candu's SETI website. Um, and that uh, few of the things that you mentioned today just uh, resonate with some of the experiences that we've had in doing um, more, more in the along the lines of First Nation municipal collaborations. But, you know, um, Tina mentioned like dial, you know, setting the contract, so dialogue principles and some other things. So uh, um, another little piece to throw into the, um, to the resource toolkit today is the Stronger yeah. Together toolkit. Yeah, nice shout out to Candy. That's lovely. Yeah. And thank you. This has been awesome. I'm just loving all the stories and the really like the nuggets. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. Any questions or comments? That's a hard one as a facilitator is not to be afraid of silence too, and not to be yeah. afraid of the pause and, and yeah, I mean, I could talk till the cows come home, right? But that, <laughs> you know, just that that just stopping and leaving space for people is it's so hard as a facilitator. Um, but it's but you need it. You need that space um, for it. So it's uh, <laughs> as you can see, as you can see, I'm just about just about killing me. You but. are. It's like you're jumping into your skin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And not not badgering people into um, commenting as well. So. Well, I guess I'm looking at the time. I just want to say an enormous thank you to my friends, uh, to Ashley and Tina. I just it's a uh, um, Awesome to work or be in the same space with you anytime, anywhere, forever. So I just I really appreciate forever. it. And, <laughs> yeah, and to uh, uh, to Elsie uh, for opening up things for us in in a such a good way. Uh, to Candu for all the the fantastic work that they do. Um, it's a pretty amazing webinar series. I was, I was snooping around because that's my what wow. I like to <laughs> like to do, and um, so much good information. So um, I'm glad we could be a part of it. So. Ashley and Tina, any last words? Yeah, I just, I'm really appreciative to have the opportunity to be a part of uh, sessions like this. And uh, like I said, you know, we learn just as much from uh, the team here as you do from us. And um, it's, it's just a wonderful opportunity to build the network and be a part of these sessions. So thank you. Yeah, I, I appreciate, um the opportunity to be here and sharing my experience for just from my just sharing what I've done um, and I'm been a chance to meet some new people have some discussion and it's always great to see Pam and Ashley. Yay. So great. Great. Thank you Pam and thank you Tina and Ashley so much for your time today. And thank you everybody for joining us for another Innovate BC session. I hope you all have a wonderful afternoon. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Have a good day. You too.